up everybody Sven Diesel here we're just gonna be tying up some zebra midges today uh, me and my boy I was teaching him how to tie them and figured why not make a video to help him out so the zebra midge uh, we're doing it on a curved uh, hook here this is a size 16 I fish them 14 to 18s I've got a tungsten bead on here and we're gonna be using some uh, nano silk here this is a 6 aught helps get the body a little bit quicker you could use a 12 aught or an 18 aught as well but we'll go ahead and start our thread and uh, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I, I'm not going to tie in my wire first. I'm going to build a taper and so I'm going to come down about to where the barb is and then go all the way back up to right behind the bead. And then I'll work my way down to about where the point is and go back to the bead. And doing so this creates kind of a taper and we'll smooth it out with our wire. I'm not too concerned about the thread or nano silk laying flat because we're going to be covering this in a UV resin for durability and a little bit of shine. But we're just using a 0.1 millimeter um, silver uh, wire here. Uh, silver seems to be one of the more popular colors. And so I'm just going to lay this on the top of the shank, working my way back with touching wraps, covering that uh, silver wire and allowing that body to kind of smooth out. And like I said, we're going to be covering this with some resin. so. It doesn't have to be flat wraps or perfect, but we're trying to, you know, get it as close as we can. The zebra midge is a pattern that's been fished a lot. I think Ted Wellings is who is accredited for the pattern, basically mimicking a uh, um, midge pupa or a corona mid. And so there's a ton of different varieties, but one of the key things is the segmentations. And that is where I'm going to just start with a little bit tighter wraps so they're closer together. And then as I work my way up the, uh, the shank here, they will begin to get a little bit more spread out. Um, that way, you know, mimicking what we're trying to mimic. So we'll go ahead and just tie this off right behind the bead. And I usually like to do uh, um, wrap behind, wrap in front, wrap behind, and wrap in front. I usually do it two to three times to secure that wire and you can uh, twist this wire out but I already have my flush cutters out so I just without pulling too much I just hold it up snip it and then I'll use my fingernail to kind of push that into the bead and we're going to be whip finishing over it and so um, we'll go ahead and do a single whip finish and we'll uh, then coat it with some UV but uh, I like using a thin UV uh, because it kind of penetrates into the uh, underbody and allows there to be kind of that dimple effect across the wire to thread or nano silk in this case. And so I'm just going to brush it on just a real thin layer. And if you get too much, I actually, you know, take a little bit down into the wire that goes onto where I don't have thread. But if you put too much, just use your finger to uh, remove the excess can't be afraid to get uh, some of this on your fingers but I just want to make sure it's coated all around that looks pretty good so I'll just go ahead and spin this making sure that the resin doesn't settle on the bottom or the top and we'll cure it for five to ten seconds and that's it pretty simple pattern you can tie this up in a bunch of different colors thread comes in a million colors tungsten comes in a million colors and wire comes in a million colors so the combinations are endless, um, tie some up, fish them, they catch fish.